Hey, live streamed right now. Hi, welcome to the Stay Free Zone. I am so excited. I am we're literally having a reunion with a friend and colleague of mine. Her name is Deborah Sundahl. I haven't actually met face to face with her since, oh my God, probably when she was filming the rather infamous How to Female Ejaculate video. If you don't have a copy of that, you are missing out. That's for sure. Uh, but I was on the set, and boy, that was really something, Deborah. It was <laughs> great to, to be here with you. It feels good inside. The whole thing feels great. It's great Aww. to see you, and I love that you reminded me you were on the set of How to Female Ejaculate, the video. First video, yeah. I could arguably yep. say it was the first commercial sex education video. I could argue that successfully, I think. 1980. Oh, I, I think you could. Did that 85. I think you could. And yeah. um, it, Carol Quain was in that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Carol, if you're watching this. Okay. So right now, today, you're in, uh, where are you right now? Montana. You're in Montana. Girlfriend, mm -hmm. what brought you to Montana? 10 years ago, I moved here from Santa Fe, asked me why I would leave Santa Fe. I thought you were in New Mexico, so I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. Yeah. What's, mm -hmm. Why did you move? No, I had 14 wonderful years in Santa Fe, and I felt drawn to move up north. I am born and raised in Minnesota, so I was missing the snow, and oh. I love the mountains, which are the same mountains as in Santa Fe. So I'm very happy up here 10 years now. How far are you from Yellowstone? Oh, crow flies, maybe 70 miles. I'm going to have to come stay with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I haven't seen Yellowstone yet. OK, so darling, I've, I just want to make sure everybody knows who you are. Uh, so I'm just going to um, cite a couple things from your bio. I want to all of you to know that Deborah is an international sex educator, as she specializes in teaching women and couples about the G-spot and female ejaculation. She is actually considered the leading expert and absolutely a pioneer in this field. So anything you wanted to know about female ejaculation, now is the time to post your questions. Uh, as that expert, she wrote the first groundbreaking book on female ejaculation. I have a copy of it. It came out in 2004. It is called Female Ejaculation and the G-Spot. And there's a revised version out too that came out in 2014. And as a pioneer, she has made the very first video. You heard me just talking about it on the subject. And that came out in 1993, How to Female Ejaculate. I got and, at the time, very few people had heard about female ejaculation, but she put it on the big screen and there's the copy of it. I have a personal copy of that too. <laughs> so, so Deborah, I, you know, I want to tell you just briefly and share with our viewers tonight, my journey around female ejaculation was really fraught. I was raised in a Christian cult when my mother admonished me to wash down there down there very quickly. In other words, don't touch. Mm -hmm. And when I got to college at the age of 18, I took a human sexuality class. It was the first time I'd been exposed to any kind of sex ed because my parents homeschooled me. Um, mm -hmm. And the first thing I learned was that masturbation was a healthy practice. And I was like, it is? I thought it was a sin. So I started touching myself. I'd wait until my roommate was asleep. And um, it took a long time. I didn't know anything, but I always made the bed wet. And oh. I, thought, I thought that was normal. I thought that was natural. I had no reason not to believe that it was. Okay. So then in all of my explorations, again, so far around probably 19, I picked up a penthouse and somebody had written a letter in to the editors and said, I am wetting the bed when I orgasm. Is there something wrong with me? Well, Penthouse told this woman that she was incontinent and should go see her doctor. 
And you know, Deborah, I was just so mortified that I'd been peeing into bed this whole time that I taught myself not to ejaculate. Needless to say, it really put a damper on my sexual satisfaction. It made it almost impossible for me to achieve an orgasm, but I was so uh, fastidious. I didn't want to do anything dirty like urinate on my sheets. And it wouldn't be until Beverly Whipple's book came out about the G-spot that she talked about female ejaculation. And I, I was so angry. At this time, I was probably in my uh, mid twenties this whole time I'd been suffering under the uh, misnomer that there was something wrong with me. Yeah. So now I had to really learn how to female ejaculate. Uh, I guess it has a happy ending because I eventually started doing that on, uh, on, on video. <laughs> I, just, I came full circle yeah. on all that. But anyway, darling, I, I just wanted you to know that um, I'm very passionate about this topic because I think it really curtails women's personal power when you start, um, I guess, uh, censoring or controlling or criticizing things about women's sexual, sexual function. Okay, long-winded intro. Tell me, why are you passionate about this? I love your intro. The story that you have is shared by many women. Pre-1982, when Whipple and Perry, Perry's book came out, the famous G-Spot, 30 million copies, 23 languages. That is the book that put the word G-Spot into our vocabulary. So before 82, there was no word G-Spot. Forget trying to find it. And they did have a whole chapter on female ejaculation in their book. Um, but they did not call it, they had to not say certain things, which I'll get into later, for fear they would be ostracized like Dr. Grappenberg in the 1950s was, who the G-spot is named after. Right. right. And your story is so, that is what's, what happened to women before that book came out and this topic started to get talked about and sad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was in 82, I was 22. And I, I, that may very well have been, I think I didn't get a copy of the book till I was probably 23 or 24. Uh, yeah. A lot of lost years there. Mm -hmm. And does women will hear this information and then they, they can get angry. It feels, how can I have this in my body and not, and be the age I am. Some of them, most of them mothers with three children, right? Yeah. I mean, really? Well, and the, the female prostate was actually in the anatomy books in the 1800s. Then around the time women went for the vote on a worldwide basis, a lot of women were lobbying for a vote. Mm -hmm. um, they took it out of the, the books. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't, what was it, 2003 when they finally decided that we have a prostate after all? That's correct. The, the federation that names medical anatomical terms said, yes, there is such a thing as the female prostate. You see, they didn't call it that until as late as, actually it was 2008 when wow. they really published it. Oh. They used to consider the female prostate vestigial. That means dried up, not functioning. And we get that from Alexander Skeen who is a Victorian, not only is he a urologist, he was created the International um, Organization Association of, of Urology and Gynecology, something oh. like that. The internet, he was the top man. I, this is a problem, and I think I think one of the things. Tell me if you agree with this. Now that more women are doctors and researchers, we're actually getting more accurate information about female sexual response and female sexual anatomy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I would agree, surely. Yeah. yeah, women women are 
put their experience, personal experience into what they've learned and what they, you know, tell their clients or their patients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So slowly that's making some changes. Yeah. But they do not learn about sex in school. I want to make this really clear. Doctors never have one course in sexuality. They know nothing. Whipple and Perry, who were the PhD sexologists and scientists, had six years of sex, sex, sexual, sex, sexological study. This is a huge difference and part of, part of that um, course on sexuality is to look at your own sexuality. And there's a whole psychology piece to it where you look, look at your beliefs and, and where you're at with your own sexuality. So medical doctors are nowhere near doing that. What happened is Dr. Oz got popular and they saw that, oh, sex is okay to talk about now in public. So I think we better get in on this massive market. Uh, and that's really what's happened. Yeah, and still they're doing really poor research. Because I, I read about a research study that just came out within the last year, I think. And uh, no, it was not by any colleagues of ours. And it was not by sexologists. I, I think they were urologists trying to figure out where the female ejaculate comes from. And um, the sample size was seven women. Deborah, you and I both know that significant sample size has to be 30 or more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know what? That's anecdotal like information, which is which is in itself sad. That there's so much research about um, erectile dysfunction, <laughs> but very little research on women's sexual function. And it's no wonder that women can really a lot of women lose their their interest in sex um, as they age. And I think. There are many different explanations for that, but I think some of it is it's just there's no um, education like you were talking about about how women's bodies operate, how they work, what what feels good. Yeah, they they lose interest after a while because it's mostly about pleasing him. And once your kids are gone, you're raised and gone, and you headed on 25 years of marriage, you start. I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so because you know you don't know there's another way to be, then the only option is to close down. And in general, that's happening quite a bit. Yeah. So you teach classes to women who want to learn how to female ejaculate. Yes, that's right. And so we know now that every woman has a prostate. That's, that's like a scientific fact. And, when, and obviously I, I just wanna, you know, for anybody who's not cisgender female, we are talking about cisgender female bodies. So born with a female body, um, you have a prostate and it can get prostate cancer even. Well, let's not go there. <laughs> Do you hear about female prostate cancer? No, <laughs> why is that? We what? have a prostate, but gee, we don't hear about cancer. But in the meantime, they're ripping the male prostate out right and left. It's remind I feel say that there's an attack on the male prostate by the medical profession, just as the, it just as they did far too many unnecessary hysterectomies um, in women in the 60s and 70s, and still kind of doing that today. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, it's, I mean, cancer is another big topic for sure. And uh, we're not well, actually we'll let that go, but it is something to contemplate. Yeah. You know, I, I think... don't talk about cancer. We were because see, this is what they did to the male prostate is they made this a diseased organ yeah. and men are even more disconnected from their prostate, their pleasure. It's kind of a war it's, on sex. It's a pleasure it? organ. 
you yeah. see that has not been advertised for many no either. it hasn't the old peace spot <laughs> um, now it's a pleasure organ peace spot massage <laughs> is very very nice in fact it it brings down any swelling that's happening in the prostate. There's body yes. workers that have been doing this for 30 years now, and they have proved it. They have written articles that it reduces the swelling massage. So you don't need to get all like freaked out around a large the prostate. First, yeah. The first step is to simply relax and get a massage. Yeah. And, and obviously we're not giving medical advice today that's no, no. Consult with your doctor. <laughs> no we have to say that that's the law but i want to know deborah why are women wanting to why are they coming to you to learn how to female ejaculate oh um veronica actually what's happening for at least half if not more women is they're they're tired of the clitoral orgasm of the vibrating and they just feel there's something more um there they too many women i've noticed have used the vibrator for stress release just like men are you know a couple times a day that's just stress release um and so that really whittles down your capability to have a full sexual sexual life. Yeah, so how, how can female ejaculation uh, enlarge and enhance somebody's sexual experience? First of all, because they learn about the female prostate and it has a different nerve than the clitoris penis. The prostate's male and female, different nerve. This is Whipple and Perry's book. Yeah. This is one of their discoveries was Whipple and Perry in the G-Spot book. Two different nerves, two different orgasmic sensations. So we all know the penis clitoris, right? <laughs> Panting, fast vibration of whatever type. Right. And then right. we hold our breath. You know, we have, you know, pretty good orgasm. Yeah. But with this prostate nerve, which is actually the pelvic nerve, which is part of the vagus nerve. I was going to ask you, is this part of the vagus nerve? Okay. The pelvic branch of the vagus nerve. And just for our viewers, the vagus nerve actually um, is connected to parasympathetic nervous system. Is that true? All I know is it's the antidote to the fight and flight. The freeze. Exactly. Right. Ex or flight. Exactly. <laughs> right. right. So, the, so it, I call it the meditation nerve. The meditation I call it the meditation nerve. nerve because it relaxes us. And it is the nerve that you use in meditation. And it um, can bring uh, slower brain waves into motion and deeply relax you. Therefore, how to have an orgasm with that nerve? Relax and breathe. Slow and steady stimulation. Slow and steady on the prostate, which is just here inside the vagina. Slow, breathe, move the body. We can go into more details with that orgasm, but those that's the difference between the two. Yeah, actually, I think I think our viewers probably would like to know how can they find their like is there a difference between the prostate, female prostate, and the G spot? And then how do you find those two parts of inner female anatomy? The G spot is the female prostate. Uh huh. Okay. The female prostate surrounds the urethral canal and it's sprinkled along the urethral canal in women about two inches. Okay. Now, so is the male prostate surround the urethral canal. Right. It's approximately two inches long. Uh -huh. But you see, it's like a chestnut, we've called it, you've heard that. Right. 
but there's 32 ducts and glands of the female prostate and it's like a vine. Imagine a vine of grapes. So it's sprinkled along the urethral canal about two inches. The other difference is the location. The male prostate sits right next to the bladder. The female prostate sits at the outside opening of the body. And because it surrounds the urethra, the urethra and vagina share the same wall. So when the prostate swells, which it does with prostatic fluid, right. um, it actually hangs down through the roof of the vagina. It can fill up the vagina. It can be quite large. So yeah. it's just inside the vagina, two inches. So it's not a spot. And all women have a prostate, just like all men do. Right. I really appreciate how you are um, helping us understand how similar male and female prostate is. Yeah. I actually, when I'm reading uh, research and literature on this, I don't encounter that. So it's, and, and it makes total sense because in the womb, fetuses, regardless of what kind of chromosomal um, arrangement they have, have what we call analogous tissue. Uh -huh. um, it has that potential to turn into either male or female, or sometimes uh, hermaphroditic right. uh, genitalia. Oh, for those interested, this is the book that Harvard funded study in 1982. This is the book that inspired the work of the G-Spot. She takes the reproductive organs of the man and the woman and gives the parts the same name. Cool. Because in, in the rest of the anatomy, a heart is a heart, it doesn't matter. Right. But different names here, because it looks a little different, but it has the same parts. 10 year Harvard funded study. We can't let Josephine be forgotten. Oh, here she is. There she is. I'm really into the history of these wonderful people who did so much work in the 80s um, and 90s on the female prostate that I think I'm gonna, that I've been reading more about them lately. Well, and you know, you come after, but you're part of that history. I just took their science and I made it Applic I made it so people could use it in their bedrooms. Well, you, in, in your book, one of the things I loved about your book was you mentioned something called retrograde ejaculation, which is mm -hmm. documented in male bodies. Uh -huh. so, that, so that the ejaculate goes back into the bladder. Mm -hmm. And you were positing a theory that it's possible that this also happens in female bodies. Do you want to say a little bit more about that? Yes, that was studied by um, Santa Maria Cabela from Spain, also in the 80s. All, again, all this st stuff was studies were done then. And he studied women who ejaculated um, and he said if they didn't release it to the outside of the body, it would go retrograde, meaning back up the urethra canal into the bladder and then women pee it out. Uh -huh. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, uh, uh, about the difference between uh, urine and female ejaculate is the prostatic specific antigen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, I mean, for, for those- pro pro That antigen is, is found in the male prostate. That's how they measure the health of the male prostate. So they found that in women, which proves that they have a prostate, basically. Right. Exactly. And uh, PSA for short, 
So it's one of the ways scientists determine, oh, okay, this is actually a jet. But from the woman's experience of it, what is the difference between urinating and ejaculating? The urge to ejaculate feels like the urge to pee. So that's the last thing most women are, is going to do, right? When she's making love is pee. So women don't. They take their pelvic floor muscles and they clamp down on that urge to pee, which is the urge to ejaculate. Right. And this is the main reason why women are not ejaculating. They mistake it for the urge to pee and they are not going to let that out of their bodies during sex. Oh, that is so tragic. Mm -hmm. As a female ejaculator, I know that what it feels like, mm -hmm. sure, you feel some sense of relief when you urinate, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it just comes out in a stream. Um, for me, at least, my ejaculate comes out like a water sprinkler. It's, it's got a lot of force to it. Sometimes it'll go three feet, as a matter of fact. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the Polynesians had a word for, had a phrase for that. It's called spray the wall. Yes. Yes. They were studied by Margaret Mead, famous anthropologist, and Otto Finch, also German anthropologist. And they, they told us, Mead and Finch, that spray the wall is a Polynesian term that women use to describe their ejaculate. I think it was kind of a sport even. They were competing or something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, don't know. No, I think that's a Western concept. So it probably it. is, but I just want to tell you there is um, uh, a, a professor, a doctor in your in your video, female ejaculate, how to female ejaculate. You'll remind me of her name in a minute. Um, who I dubbed the Olympic ejaculator because she oh. just spray <laughs> out like three feet on command. Yeah, that's Dr. Shannon Bell. She's a professor of women's studies up in Canada. I think Toronto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She did barbells with two strength in her. <laughs> She's amazing. Pelvic floor, and she could really shoot it out far. Yeah, amazing, amazing woman. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So the sensation uh, for myself, and maybe you can share you you know worked with so many different women of it's very definitely tapping into that vagus nerve that you're talking about to female ejaculate because mm -hmm. i know for me it's like the weight of the world comes off my shoulders mm -hmm. now i don't feel that way when i go to the bathroom no <laughs> <laughs> no for sure it yeah. does feel really I know also in the abdomen, it can really feel like it's just empty. Yeah. Like there's this, now there's this empty space there that feels really good. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, if I ejaculated a large quantity the night before, I can't usually produce that much ejaculate the second night. It's going to no. be a small amount of ejaculate, which yeah. also really militates against the whole argument that it's just pee. Because uh, oh, I can not pee. urinate all day long. <laughs> no, no, it's not pee. I don't even bother to compare it anymore. I, it's been 20 years for me. I've seen so many women with, in workshops. I give workshops, there's 20 or 30 women there. And I give at least a dozen a year, mostly in, in Europe. I've been also traveling to Europe. and. I give my PowerPoint evening presentation to the public, men and women, and um, it's prostatic fluid, you know. Yeah. Men, I want to say this, men urinate and ejaculate through their urethra. Women ejaculate and urinate through their urethra. We're the same that way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, I mean, if you've, I'm bisexual, so I've 
you know, made love with women. And, um, you know, if you, if you taste it and smell it, you'd know. <laughs> oh, it's divine. It's, oh, and you should. The next time you ejaculate or the first time, put your nose in it and take a big whip. Oh, it's yeah. just lifting. It's inspiring, you know, it's divine. This is what it, a women's bodies create naturally. Yeah. And it's, you know, the ancient Egyptians actually used it. They, they considered it like something that would be um, good for their faces. They put it on their faces. Yes. It's like it's considered mm -hmm. Amrita. It's sacred. Mm -hmm. Amrita is it, in Sanskrit word, but also the Indian culture. Um, Dao, uh, Dao, um, Tantra culture from India and also East China. Yeah, Amrita, nectar of the gods. And Sanskrit is our oldest language on the planet. So it's been around a while. Shunga yeah. artists, 16th century Japan, they love the erotic. Oh, you, if you get a four color art book on your coffee table, you'll see Shunga art still. They, the lady would ejaculate into a bowl. Wow. Right? And they would warm it and drink it. They considered it, Tantra considered it healthy. The Shunga considered it like this. If you were fortunate enough to get ejaculate all over your body, you're going to be immortal. Oh my God. <laughs> And uh, thank you so much, Western civilization, for taking us away from the sacred and putting us into a place where we all have to feel self-conscious and ashamed. It's yeah. just such a fall from grace. It's amazing. Deborah, I didn't know all these ancient cultures um, had such an enlightened view of female sexuality. Yeah, it seems like we really went into a dark, dark rabbit hole. Yeah. Well, look, I we're going to have to, I, I could keep talking to you about this. Are but we I, keep over our time? It went so quickly. It did, didn't it? I want to make sure that all of the viewers know how to find you and okay. how to enroll in one of your classes. Oh. And also how to find your book and find your video. I'm sure everybody's going to be clamoring for this. So, so let us know how can they, and I'll of course have all your links uh, at the bottom of this video, but right now I'm wanting everybody to be able to write. You know, every, everything is on my website, my weekend workshops, which are in person and online, yeah. same workshop, just broken up into five weeks in a row. And, you know, you learn the, the anatomy, then we see it, right? You can see your own G-spot. Then we learn about, you know, the touch. And then we do the orgasm, then the ejaculation. So it's all on my website. Um, the book you can buy on my website or it's available, you know, at Amazon or other local bookstores. Right. And local erotic boutiques. So, so support local first. And is that what it? What about the video? Is that still available? Yes, this video is still available. It's And I keep saying video. I'm so sorry because I was there the day it was filmed. The DVD. <laughs> yeah. Well, now it's a digital link. Oh. oh so, so it's can, also a digital link. download it. Yeah, you can purchase it at my store and down and, and you can download it. No, you can't download it. You just get a link that you can stream whenever you want. Cool. Talk about well, Tantra. This is the Tantra female ejaculation video that I did. Oh, I didn't even know about that one. Mm -hmm. And this is the, I did this one in Paris. So we have three women's G-spots you can see in this wow. video. Wow. And uh, it's, it's a workshop. I have another video for couples where you can see Elaine's G-spot. Man, that's the 
video to buy for yourself, female ejaculation for couples and ladies too, but the ladies like the workshop video. And then you can just get the lecture and get the anatomy lesson because you need the anatomy. You need you to know where it is exactly. Yeah. What it looks like. And then there's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Then then you won't be mystified anymore. Got to learn, learn where everything is and then learn how it works. Yeah. Yep. Deborah, I, you've been doing this for so long and I've, I can't tell you how many times I've seen an infuriating headline in some mainstream publication. And I have just been so grateful to have your steady, clear, sane voice about this very beautiful, natural part of female sexuality. Wow, Veronica, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We, we have to keep reminding everybody about female pleasure because it keeps trying to get disappeared. It sure does, <laughs> one way or another. Isn't it amazing? First there was AIDS and then there was just say no. And I don't know what's the latest one now probably something news popping up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I think in some ways, mainstream porn took it towards the direction of male pleasure and away from female pleasure. So that's why I really mm -hmm. want to encourage people to get your um, woman produced videos because they will get the truth and pleasure that actually works for women's bodies. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah, porn is Hollywood. Porn is acting. All right, love. Right? Thank you, Veronica. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I love you and um, you too. Cheer, cheering you on. Great. Thanks for all the work that you do as well and for having me on tonight. Thank you very much. My, my privilege. Bye for now, babe. Bye.